This is why this nullifies every argument or desire for a Christian nation. Why? Because you can't put the Holy Spirit in this nation that you want to govern. You can't put the Holy Spirit inside that, that governor or that mayor or that president. many of you know, I had a recent interview with Joel Weapon of Right Response Ministries. He is one of the one of the louder voices that you hear clamoring for a Christian nation, Christian nationalism. And I wanted to have a sit down interview with him. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just going back and just looking through some of the parts of the interview. The interview was only supposed to be about an hour, hour and a half long, it ended up being three hours long. And so I'm taking parts of it and just letting those play by itself. But what I'm doing here is I want to go over a part here that I think really just says all that you really need to know about Christian nationalism. That is, if the person is actually a Christian and they truly want to out of a good heart, that is out of a good heart, all people that are uh, ascribing this or wanting this, they're, they're not doing so out of a good heart. And I'm not saying this about Joel one way or the other, but if a person is truly a Christian and they want out of the goodness of their heart and they want to see a nation that is governed by godly principles and laws, uh, there's a problem in their argument. As a matter of fact, their desire for a Christian nation is actually self-defeating. That is, if they really, truly are indeed uh, looking from this from a Christian standpoint. So I want to play this, a little bit of this clip. I want to come back and forth in this because I want you to see the point that he's making. And I want you to see how he just thoroughly nullifies his point. Well, I, what, what I'm saying is it's a never-ending war. We are never going to get to the point to where it is like it should be. That won't happen until Christ reigns outwardly yeah. and within. And it'll so, never be perfect. No, no doubt. It'll not never even be perfect. perfect. I don't. I don't. I don't right. see. Uh, okay, the, the goal. Of, it, the goal of a Christian that, nation is to do what? Uh, the goal of a Christian nation is to uh, to legislate and enforce uh, righteous laws according to God's eternal standard written in His Word. Uh, and to orient, to create uh, the temporal conditions that are best suited towards um, heavenly realities. Now, this takes place at about, if you go look at the, the main video, around the 55, 56, 54, somewhere in that area mark. But I want you to notice what he says the goal of a Christian nation is, to orient the people or to have a nation that's oriented around the goals uh, Christian principles that are set out by God, just to have rules and regulations and, and life that is regulated around God's word. Problem is, we've had that several times. As a matter of fact, we have it vividly on display in the Bible. Uh, so not to not to force conversion because you can't. Uh, God is the the Holy Spirit is the one who can you know who who regenerates the heart. Only God can do that. So nobody's talking about forced conversions. Or and and in a Christian nation. You would inevitably have a ton of people that in in the true sense of of you know inward regeneration by the spirit there, there'd be a ton of people who were not christian they're, they're not truly christian uh that's that's always been the case historically uh that was the case in israel uh, in the case of israel i would argue that it was a vast minority uh, it wasn't even like that half of them or the certainly not the majority i mean most of israel died in unbelief you know it mm -hmm. was always a minority that was actually regenerate and that actually you know was born again uh, by the spirit and now i want to stop there because i want to just bring up a point now you all know me me what whatever god says i think that we ought to be limited to what the word of god says and this is one of the things that i've that i brought up with people who have this belief and it tends to be those who are five five point calvinists that this belief that people in the old testament that their hearts were regenerated that could be nothing further from the truth as a matter of fact i want to pull up a passage because this also goes to this what i'm speaking of uh, i'll bring this passage back up again but in deuteronomy 10 16 he tells the people of israel he says so circumcise your heart their heart's not regenerated at this point in time no one's heart has been uh and stiffen your neck no longer now he goes on in deuteronomy 30 verse 6 after he's told them to do this for themselves because you're disobedient people and this is before they even go into the land he tells them that he in the future that he will circumcise their hearts and he keeps reiterating this all throughout the old testament that he is going to keep doing so the reason why i bring this up is because part of the problem that they're having is some of it has to do with just bad hermeneutics and eisegeting a text. There is no person, there is no pastor that tells us that anyone's heart 
in the Old Testament was regenerated, that there was anyone that was born from above by the Spirit. The reason why this is important is because that's going to be a huge problem for, for Christian nationalists, and this is why it's part of the thing that nullifies their belief or their desire to have a Christian nation. The majority of them just kind of played along. If there was a good king, you know, then Israel did well, even though a lot of them weren't actually regenerate and uh, didn't actually truly love God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Um, but, you know, outwardly in terms of behavior, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the um, majority report of Israel during that time under good leadership with a good king was, you know, outward behavior was generally good, you know, and if there was a bad king, then the high places would erect in Israel, Asherah poles, and, you know, all these um, high places and altars to the, you know, to the balls and to, you know, Molech and to, you know, all these different things. And so that's, that's just, that's the lay of the land. That's, you know, that's how it's always been. So nobody's advocating for, uh, hey, if we could do Christian nationalism, then we'd have perfect. Um, and, and like you said, I, I don't even think we'd have close to perfect. I, I'm okay with that. Uh, but right now, whatever we have right now, whatever you want to call it is so far from perfect. <laughs> um, we, we killed 70 million babies and we're mm -hmm. cutting off the genitals of little kids. Like, mm -hmm. like, I mean, uh, like how, my question is just how bad does it have to get? Um, I, I just think the boogeyman is silly, you know, that like all oh, the crusades, you know, we don't want to have that again. The, the Christians in the crusade. Now when you think about what he's saying, how, and he makes some sense, some, some things are true. Speaking about the ills that are happening here, the ills that are happening here. I want you to think about, what he's saying the problem is, where the problem is, and he's going to say something that, and I want you to catch this, but the thing I want to point out here, if we're talking about, if he says that how bad does a problem has to get, what, what more do we have to wait for, what do we have to do, this is presupposing that we are the solution, that we are going to be the ones that are going to fix the problems. That's a huge, that's a huge arrogant statement to make crusades uh, didn't even get close to killing as many people as we have not even close okay so not even, like, so so i would say this joe i would say this um and you and i would agree on on this point that the greatest leader the world has ever seen was the lord as he led them out of egypt into mm -hmm. the land right amen sure he makes a statement even before they get there that you need to uh circumcise your heart uh no longer stiffen your neck get right and I'm gonna, or I'm gonna put you out the land. Now they hadn't even gone in the land. These are horrible people. You know why? Because that's what mankind. Are, uh, that's what mankind is. You and I are right. just are are just we're just we're just not good. We're not we're not that great of people. Um, and so even with God God leading them, giving them a prophet, giving them signs and wonders, speaking out of heaven, raining down fire to to uh, 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 to punish people, or having the earth open up. They still, they still would go astray because the heart is sick. My heart is, was naturally sick, yours too. Outside of the spirit coming in and doing something, um, that's what it's going to be. And they still, even with a good king or a bad king, they would still do disobedience. They, they would still rebel. And so right. only two, thing that's going to happen. Reasons. Go, I'm sorry, go two ahead. Reason. Two reasons. Total depravity, I'm with you, and total depravity hasn't changed. So that, that's timeless. But also, that's one reason, total depravity. The heart is desperately sick, uh, but also the the complete insufficiency of the old covenant. Uh, something substantial, significant has changed um, in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Um, old covenant Israel is, um, we are not destined uh, to have the same fate as old covenant Israel, um, but there, there actually has been a change. Uh, we could even use the word dispensations. We, are, you know, we're in a new dispensation, a new era, a new time, and uh, and the new covenant is uh, infinitely superior um, in its work in its scope. Uh, a big part of it is uh, both depth. Um, it's it's founded on better promises. Uh, so the new covenant is, I would argue, to make it simple, it is both better and bigger, better and bigger. How 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 is our walk now how are things better because i think i think your answer well, right, is going to nullify right. your 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 uh your 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 desire so i'm asking him how is his walk the walk of a believer how is joel's walk as a professed believer uh filled with the holy spirit or any christian filled with the holy spirit anyone that professes to have have, have a faith in christ who has the holy spirit 
How is their walk different than those of the Old Testament that you're saying that we had a leader, we had a government of God's laws, and it didn't work? How? What's the difference between mankind then and mankind now? It takes me a while to get this point, but eventually he understands my, my point. Well, right right now it's terrible. You and no, I, no, 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 no. I mean, as, as a believer, that. how is our walk with Christ how is our life as a believer better? What what makes it better? For the you you mean like a New Testament Christian better than what? What's what are we comparing it to? Why is why is your life as a as a follower of God, let's say, better than those that were trying to follow God in the Old Testament? Are we but are we just to clarify, are we talking about Old Testament saints? Those those like David, those who we're gonna see in heaven? They were saved. David or Bob who tried to follow God and didn't. What makes what makes your walk um, better? What make what, what puts you in a, in a more uh, superior position? I, I hear you, but again, real quick, because you threw Bob in there. If it was just me versus David, I, I'd, I'd have an answer for you. But is Bob, Old Testament, Old Covenant Bob? Old Testament, Old Covenant Bob, Bob of Tarsus. It, sure, but is, in, is, he, is Bob in hell or was no, Bob no, regenerate? No, Bob, Bob claimed to keep the law. Bob claimed to follow, but he couldn't. He never did. But he, so he never he never followed the law, but he was um, he was born again. He's elect. Bob Bob is a no. Bob, Bob Bob was a Jew who was never oh. really a believing Jew, but he would come for the feast. He uh, would come for the I ceremony. See, I see. I see. So, so Bob's in hell. So, so, so why hell. why why are why is your walk your your following better than Bob as well as is it or or why better than David? Right. So, so Bob and David are different. And, and what you're describing, you're saying he wasn't truly a believer. So Bob is in hell. So what, why is my, my life better than Bob's? Because I have the Holy Spirit indwelling within me. I have a new heart. The law mm -hmm. of God has been written on my heart. He says, not only uh, is the law of God written on my heart, because there's a sense in which that's true, even of the unbeliever, because of the Imago Dei. That's Romans chapter one, but especially Romans chapter two. But uh, even further than that, he says, I will put the fear of myself within you. Whereas for the unregenerate, for the wicked, Romans chapter three, there is no fear of God before their eyes. It's not that they don't fear God enough. It's that they don't fear God at all. So the fear of God has been placed within me. Not only has his law been written on my heart, but he mm -hmm. goes further and says, I will cause you to walk in my precepts and walk in my ways. So the reason why there's more hope for Joel is nothing to do with Joel. It has everything to do with Christ. But the reason there's more hope for Joel than for Bob is because the Bob that you're describing under the old covenant died off in the wilderness and unbelief. Bob, Old okay, Testament so, Bob, is so in hell. I get so all. If we of want that. to talk about Joel and David, that that's a good question. We can talk well, about that. But let's just Bob, stop. Bob, Bob. I'm just let's saying Bob's Bob. not helpful for the, for this. Uh, oh yes, scenario. it is. Yes, it is because I, I because the same the same answer for your walk versus the Old Testament saints because you have something they didn't have an indwelling spirit. Same thing with Bob. This is why this nullifies every argument or desire for a Christian nation. Why? Because you can't put the Holy Spirit in this nation that you want to govern. You can't put the Holy Spirit inside that that governor or that mayor or that president. That is a work of God, not you. And Amen. so it's hopeful. Amen. It's, it's, it's pie. It, it ends up being ultimately, Joel, pie in the sky because now let me stop right there. Now, he said initially that he wanted a Christian nation, a nation where the people are governed by rules uh, from the Lord. In other words, the different actions that we should take and so forth. All of those things are governed by the Lord. We didn't have that in under the Old Testament. And so even though God was there outwardly, we would see prophets. We would see God thundering from heaven. We would see fire coming down. We would see him doing all these, these wonderful signs and miracles. Manna coming down, quail coming down, parting the Red Sea, the Jordan River, all these things like that that God would do. And man's heart was still wicked, no matter what the laws were there. The whole point and purpose of the law is to show them, no matter what the law is, you can't keep the law. Whatever whatever the rules are, you can't keep it. No matter who's sitting in the White House, you are not going to follow all of the laws. That's the problem with man. And that's why God says, fix your heart, circumcise your heart. But then he says, I will do so. He quotes rightly so, just incorrectly how he applies it that he will put his spirit in our hearts and cause us to walk in his laws, in his statutes. But you want to create a nation, do the exact same thing that has these godly statutes, these godly laws, and you think you're going to cause them to walk? I know you said that everyone is not going to be a Christian, but don't we want the mayors to be Christian, the governors, the presidents and so forth, the ones that are making laws? Well, there's no guarantee that they will be. The problem that you're going to have is the same problem that you've always had 
whether it was Israel being led by God, whether it was Israel being led by a prophet or by a king or America that was established on godly principles. We'll agree with that. Were they all godly? Absolutely not. But were the the, 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 the framers of the Constitution using the Bible as a guide? Sure. How did that work out? Because he's the same person that's going to eventually, you'll hear him in a second, talk about how this country at some point in time used to be like that. Well, if it used to be like that, how did it get this, this way? Well, because man is evil. Man is wicked. And so they established these laws based off of what? Biblical laws. And it doesn't work out. Why? Because mankind's heart is fallen it still requires the Lord to do something. You'll have just what you of have. Course. Of course. You'll have just what you have in uh, in America as you had in, in Egypt and in Old Testament Israel. People who might want to think so, it'd be a good idea, but ultimately their heart is um, wicked. And so, and what ends but, up happening is, but, I want, I want, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, the, I don't want to cut you off. Just the, the, the confusion for me, the pie in the sky, again, we're, we're not talking about something. A lot of this is hypothetical, and I acknowledge that, but it's not strictly hypothetical. We're not talking about something pie in the sky that's never been done and never will. We're talking about something, again, that is historically has been done before and it's been done here. Done, done here how? And done here. Uh, that, that America, um, in its foundation, especially... Um, with you know the 13 colonies and you know uh the covenanters and the puritans you know the american puritans and these things even before 1776 but then also for a while after um america was for the most part uh it was christian uh, that doesn't mean everybody was regenerate of course they weren't of course they weren't nobody's making that argument um, would you say but, america was a christian uh, a, a nation wrapped in a, in a in a christian um package but not really christian what Joel has fallen in love with is this nostalgic view of America. There were a lot of great and wonderful things about the founding of our country. There were a lot of wonderful things, um, wonderful people, but there were also some horrible things. Some horrible, why? Because of men. There were some atrocities created by these people. He keeps referencing these 13 colonies as though there were nothing outside of those 13 colonies. Or truth be told, even in the 13 colonies, there were a lot of people killed, uh, raped, murdered. A lot of pillaging that took place. A lot of lying. A lot of dishonesty that took place. And so this nostalgic view that he has of America uh, also comes with a lot of horrific things. Why? Because there were people who had desperately wicked hearts or desperately sick hearts. And so, yeah, we are 200 something years removed from that. Or actually I take it back 400 something years removed from that 300 years, 200 years. And so you get a, a, a sterilized view of what history actually, or a sterilized history uh, of what actually took place. But these were still ungodly men, and they set this country on that on that framework. Still, what happened? We're still here. This is still the same country that was founded by those people in those thirteen colonies. What happened? Well, if if really Christian, like what I just said, if 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 we're saying really Christian is defined by um, every single citizen of these United States being a regenerate Christian, then no no nation, uh, as far as we know, no this nation has the government, the leaders. Maybe Nineveh. But what? No. Well, okay. Let's just <laughs> not, not all the people. But what about the leaders, right. the government? You know, if it's, if it's a Christian nation. Oh, but it, yeah, of course. But even in that case, you know, man looks at the outward appearance; God alone sees the heart. Establishing all that, um, applying that to a nation, um, absolutely, there are going to be citizens, and to your point, there are going to be leaders. Of course, there are. No, nobody's de no Christian nationalist that I'm aware of is denying that. There will inevitably, in the past, when you look at uh, Christian history in certain nations and things like that, again, you know, England or, um, you know, or Ireland or, or you know, uh, these United States, uh, there, there are uh, leaders who, who made a profession uh, that claim to be Christian, and in the final analysis, we'll get to heaven one day, and they won't be there. We'll find out, oh, dude, that guy, that guy was a liar. So of let course. me ask you this, uh, because, and, and this is going to take us where, where I want to go to. Um, I, I think that, and the reason why I asked, do you think America was just um, a nation that had a, a, a Christian wrapper around it? I think America was founded on Christian principles. Not, mm -hmm. not now for some. I think there were some people that were absolutely godly. I think there were some that were not, and there were some that were kind of just hiding in between. Um, because whether it be individual people or the nation, there were still ungodly atrocities that the country would do. Uh, there were those who would, would, would say that they were against slaves, um, but go ahead and accept it and have slaves um, and then would 
would molest or do things to their slaves. There were those who would do all sorts of atrocities to uh, to Native Americans, to Indians, um, and and let's be honest, to each other. The reason is, it's not it's not the Christian um, foundation. It's the it's the demonic um, inside man's heart. The problem with Christian nationalism is it seeks to stay out. The problem with Christian nationalism is it's people not staying in their lane. Remember, John says this, Jesus says this, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's not speaking about a kingdom here on earth, but the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, salvation. That's the only government, the only kingdom that we should be pointing people towards. Now, in our um, staying in our lane, what we should be doing is pointing people to Christ to live as godly as possible. And whatever nation they're in, they could help to maybe transform or affect that nation. Ultimately, it won't work because the Bible says that evil men will go from bad to worse. That's what's going to happen. And it's going to be the case that eventually the Lord is going to, as he promised, that he will come back and he will reign. There'd be no need for him to come back and reign if we've got a government that's doing it for him. That is his job. That's where he comes in. He nullified his point. Maybe he won't see this. Maybe eventually he will. I pray that he will. But trying to establish a Christian nation is never, ever once what we're called to do. If you're going to be soul scriptura, find a soul, a soul scripture to point to that. You can't. And so because of that, you're really literally wasting your time putting too much effort in that win. And I'm not saying that he's not doing this, but the focus needs to be on people obeying the word, placing their faith in Christ and growing in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord, not trying to establish or build a Christian nation. No. Remember, God tells Samuel in 1 Samuel 8 that they have not rejected you, but they've rejected me. But eventually he's going to use that to bring in the one whom the scepter shall not depart from, that being Jesus, and he shall rule. Not someone in the White House or someone in the state capitol, but it's going to be God. And so, yeah, I think I think this whole issue is, is I think it's a foolish issue. It's a silly point. Or for some people, it might be a um, an air of superiority being expressed in a racist view that is spelled out under the guise of Christian nationalism or any sort of nationalism. Uh, you put the wrap around it. It's never going to work because it never has worked. It's doomed to fail. Amen.